this mountain reaching out to catch our dream together there is nothing we can't be i'll fall Nu exclusieve Pandora Clutch cadeau. Zolang de voorraad strekt. Nu exclusieve Pandora Clutch cadeau. Zolang de voorraad strekt. Nu exclusieve Pandora Clutch cadeau. Zolang de voorraad strekt. Good evening everybody, um, welcome to another live stream of Automation Hub. Uh, first of all I would like to say thank you very much for all the likes that we got on Facebook. Uh, it's been, uh, well, 
great to see uh, people actually liking what we're doing here. So, um, as you can see, I also have our Facebook page open here. Um, let me quickly show you around uh, in case you haven't liked our Facebook page yet. Um, check out, we have some new updates here. Uh, well, announcing our own Twitch uh, live stream, of course. Um, but also, little dev updates that Killrob has been spoiling us with uh, lately. Two in two days. That's uh, that's nice um, but also other videos that are from the community let's see like the Tom here uh, that he has been working with Aaron Pleb uh, and made a video uh, well I'm doing an iCar scenario but there's also like YouTube posts on live streams that have happened and in case you missed them you can look back at them and of course this lovely car made by Norman Vauxhall uh, yeah, this is all made in game. This is not model. This is not rendered. This is just the game and yes, he did do very well. So uh, respect to you, man. I really like it. Um, so what are we gonna do today? We're gonna do some 3D modeling and in case you guys are wondering, well, what's he gonna do? Um, what about this? Some of you might go like, oh yes, and some of you might go like, ah, well, anyway, I'm just going to try my best to fix this, get it working in the game, and get it working in a way that um, it will actually work like this This actual grill, uh, because the taillights of the car are behind the grill, so I'm going to try and fix making this, and uh, if it doesn't work with... Um, the, 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 the original taillights in the game, I will make some taillights that match this so you are uh, actually able to putting this uh, to work in the game. Um, I must say I cannot show you how it will look in the game because I'm having some issues with my 3ds Max. Uh, so I cannot export the, the uh, model and test it in game, but I can show you how to model and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you how to model uh, in 3ds Max and get it uh, well basically ready to export and put in the game and I'm going to show you how to edit the Lua files so you know how to um, basically do that we have some very good and nice tutorials um, on the forms for uh, from Daffy but Daffy uses a different um, technique on making these models than I do uh, Daffy uses uh, the spline technique and I use uh, the so-called box modeling well Basically, I start out with a plane, but it's the same technique. Um, so, let's get to it. Um, I got 3ds Max open here already. I uh, already set up some work uh, before we started. Uh, so, as you can see, basically what I did, um, when you press M, you get the material editor. And there's going to be um, this material right here. This is the image I just downloaded from the website. I dragged it in here. And... Uh, well now it's here so what I did was take a plane and then I actually drew a plane I took the resolution uh, of the image before and uh, checked what the image resolution was and uh, basically what I do is I select the plane I press M select the material and then click this little button here saying assign material to selection and what now happens as you might already have witnessed tada we have a car on the plane so basically I can scale this up make it look real funky uh, but I can also make it wider uh, stretch it out a bit uh, so I already did this with the correct resolution then the next thing sometimes it doesn't look that proper so um, when you have the material selected right click there's this object properties and when you select the object properties uh, there's this thing here display properties and you might want to check that out since uh, it might be set to by layer and as soon as it's set to by layer well this one will also be set to by layer probably you might want to set set all of those to by object because you will get this other um, properties available and first thing you want to do is uncheck this frozen in gray so uncheck it and click freeze as soon as you click freeze then it's gonna stick in there and now I cannot move it around anymore so what happens if I do not do that let's see 
and freeze all. Uh, object properties. Let's say I click this one. Now let's freeze selection. This happens. And now you don't have a blueprint anymore to work from. So basically that's not what you want. Um, so let's quickly reset this to like freeze and not shown in gray. And it's done. Okay. Um, by the way, with F3, you can show things like that. So that's quite handy to know as soon as you're uh, trying to line out stuff. Uh, but basically, I most of the time work from the perspective view and then just press like F for front view or the T for top view. Well, basically, it's not showing anything because the plane is like flat and you don't see it. Uh, so that's a possibility. And then go back to perspective, you press P. Um, I also have number seven here, and this is set to show me the poly count. And um, yeah, this this is quite handy because uh, basically what you don't want to do is make 20 million polygons and vertices because this is gonna lag the game pretty much. You uh, always tend to aim to get fixtures uh, to up to maximum, let's say 800. That's, that's still a lot, but let's say 800, that's still doable. Um, not causing too much FPS drop in the game. And for car models, well, you basically go up to maybe 3000 as a maximum, definitely. Um, because it's gonna be quite hard to keep it low poly when you just start modeling. And uh, well, if you're a bit more experienced, you just manage to keep the poly count down a lot. Um, let's see, so we have Duke X in the chat once again. Let's see, you forgot a couple of streams. Yes, I noticed you weren't uh, you weren't there, but uh, well, hey, welcome back and uh, thank you for showing up again. Really appreciate that. Um, and yes, we have Aaron doing the chat for us again. Basically, I'm also monitoring the chat because if you have any questions related to the 3ds Max, uh, modeling I'm doing currently just feel free to ask uh, I'm here and uh, willing to help you with anything uh, that you got on your mind so uh, yeah feel free to ask me um, well I think uh, we should get to it then I don't want to keep you waiting any longer so basically yet again I start with a plane and well I'm gonna draw this in the top one because this is much easier than the plane will be set good already as you can see I just drew one right there first thing I need to do is um, I'm gonna zoom in right here and I'm gonna select this move tool well it's pretty much selected by uh, uh, automatic automatic thing <laughs> but there's some hotkeys for those those are W E and R so W will do the move thing E will give you the rotation don't confuse it with R R rotation it's definitely E and then R will give you the scaling option um, so if you don't see me clicking on one of those icons I'm using hotkeys because it's much faster and easier um, so yeah anyway so I press W and I'm moving it up hold on let me pick this one to shade it because it's gonna show uh, um, um, a shadow anyway uh, so I have to unselect the shadow. Um, yes. Let's see. So I'm going to move this up and make this... Well, you can barely see the white lines, but this is where the plane is. Um, so I'm going to line this up with, with the, the top of the grill. I'm thinking of two ways we could do this. If you want uh, an outside of the grill to be there, you need to start at the top. But I was thinking maybe um, I could make uh, well, it mo I could make it more like um, some s well, not etched model, pretty much. That's well, I, I don't know how to explain this in English very well. Let me think about it. Um, when you have the game, normally you have the grills with an e outer edge that uh, will morph into the body. But uh, as this grill doesn't have that, it actually has an open spot right here. So what you might want to do, we could do it in two different ways, like making it with an outer grill, or we can just make those 
uh, those lines going from left to right, those horizontal lines. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to make those. But this still requires uh, starting with this plane. Um, but I'm going to start the other way around. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to draw a little, little square shape there. Um, let's quickly see because I need the picture for a second to see if there's anything that keeps these things in place. I think there's only like uh, a rod going on the left and on the right side of this uh, this image. So it's it's very good to actually look close at the picture and see uh, how it's really built. Well, even better would be a, bl a blueprint, but you can't basically find the blueprint of every individual part of every single car. So you have to really, uh, well, do it imaginary sometimes. Um, let's see a quick drink because, well, I've been talking a lot already. Um, so we're gonna just make this outer thing work right there. Let's see, so I'm gonna go and do this fancy. I'm not gonna start in the middle, as you might think. Um, for this one, I'm just gonna go a bit more to the left. I'm gonna sit right there. And I'm first gonna make this, um, this, this vertical thing holding everything in place. So let's see. Uh, basically this grill is gonna be see-through, so you can see anything that's inside. And if not, if that doesn't end up looking good, I can still release it by um, uh, putting a grill mesh in the back or making it dark in the back. So don't worry about that. Uh, good evening, Jacko, by the way. Welcome. And uh, I hope uh, you uh, learned something from this because I'm really eager to see if you are actually able to make something. I think you could uh, contribute quite well to making some uh, nice mods for the game. Okay, back to the modeling. Let's get this one. Then right click, convert to, edible poly. And this gives you the option of vertices, edges, borders, polygons. And those are selectable with the numbers one, two, three, and four. So if you don't see me clicking any of those, same as the, uh, the, the movement, rotation, and scaling, I'm pressing hotkeys. So one, two, three, and four. And for the icons up here are W, E, and R. Let's see select this edge here and I'm holding shift and then I'm dragging it out now I don't see where my lines are so what I'm doing um, down here right in the bottom it's barely visible you can make this bigger I'm gonna press F4 so now I can actually see where my edges are and where my vertices will be so I'm gonna do it like that just gonna uh, align this one more proper properly Let's see I just really want the top and the bottom so uh, because for later these um, for changing things later uh, this is gonna be better uh, as it's gonna align much better uh, let's see so I'm gonna move that a bit to the left also another trick um, if you press alt X I'm gonna write this down somewhere for all the hotkeys but if you're gonna press alt x you get a little bit see through on the on the model you're currently making and then you can see the blueprint in the back much better so i'm gonna do it like that and um, basically uh, this thing is gonna be running down the back here holding all these these plates even though you don't see it but i'm just gonna make it like that so it looks a bit more rigid uh, now I'm gonna hold shift again, drag it down to the next one and then drag it down and align it again and then drag it down once again and then drag another one down right there and we're gonna do the same thing right here there and right there by the way I set middle mouse, bu mu middle mouse button to um, move around like that uh, basically it's this uh, pan view uh, hand down at the bottom here uh, but it's much easier like that of course like that and then for the last one down to there okay so we have that um, 
let's see, I'm thinking maybe we can alter this later. So I'm just gonna gonna delete that one I'm just gonna put this one straight up because it's gonna be much easier at this point and I can move it to the right later on to make it a bit bendy okay um, next thing I want to do is select um, let's see all these Does it look? oh wait it's selected it's a bit funny but it's yeah it's selected anyway I'm gonna select all of these edges holding control and then drag selecting is going to be the easiest instead of aiming perfectly to uh, select this line so I'm going to do it like that and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shift and drag these out so I'm going to go in a couple of steps actually I'm just going to make it uh, like four steps until the middle um, the reason I'm doing that is uh, is because um, when you're gonna place the grill on the body and it's gonna uh, have to curve around uh, the way the body actually uh, runs then you're gonna need all these edges um, you're gonna need all these edges to uh, uh, make it bend nicely with the model you know so so it's not gonna cut like diagonal through the body you want to actually mor morph it nice and smoothly so that's the reason bit long explanation but I hope you get the point um, yeah in case um, uh, some people th uh, that just joined haven't gotten the intro uh, there's of course some nice tutorials on the, the forums uh, by Daffy uh, he did some uh, spline modeling technique and basically I'm using the box modeling technique but well I'm using planes but they're the same um, this uh, well, I, I, fi I find this technique uh, much easier uh, to use eventually and uh, well I've been doing this for a longer time so um, I just wanted to show this to you because since there's different techniques, uh, the different techniques uh, might suit other people much better. Um, let's see, so let's continue. I was gonna get four steps here. Um, maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna try to make them equal in length they don't have to be precise as long as they just match up just a little bit lower to make them nice like that let's see I, I need to, to stay in, in line with the rest of the girl like that okay so the horse is right there And then, let's see, I'm gonna make this one two more steps then. Alright, so basically, um, what I wanna do now is uh, I can just like, well, I can leave him here, but this is, it's, it's gonna end up the game, it's gonna cut it away anyway. So if I'm, I'm gonna leave it like that, you can see in the very bottom, um, well, keep your eyes right here on this uh, X axis. When I'm dragging this around, you can see it's actually going into positive values, and I'm going to the left now, it's going into negative values. And basically, I want all those um, down on zero. Because the, if I'm going to go in positive values, the game is going to cut it back to zero anyway. And uh, this way, I know where actually the boundary is uh, of where I need to add detail and where not. Uh, if I'm going to go into negative values, then this means the game will uh, leave this uh, center hole empty uh, because it's going to go symmetrical. It's going to flip it to the other side and make it symmetrical. So it's going to leave this hole empty right here. So I'm going to move those. I'm going to select the vertices and I'm going to put down those down to zero. So that should be the center of the grill. Um, I think I didn't really put the, the blueprint in the middle because it would have been like a bit to the right or down the middle of the horse but yeah it's not really a big deal because uh, eventually you will be able to scale the grill yourself in the game and well that's gonna be the gonna be the thing um, you can scale it yourself so it doesn't really bother if I'm gonna cut it down here as gonna be the center or it's gonna be basically the rest of the shape that's gonna work all right 
Um, I'm gonna... Let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna select these ones on the la left side now because we wanna want it to go around the corner in a bit. So basically, I'm gonna extrude this, and because it's gonna be a bit curvy, it's gonna bend around here. I want a couple of more steps. So as you might see, this. Um, doesn't really line up well so I'm gonna go for the end of that and I'm gonna have to individually do this for a second saying this uh, this technique or my modeling skills are by any way perfect or uh, well there's still some things that I need to learn well a lot I need to learn uh, I only know like let's say maybe 20% of the whole program and that's like nothing and every single year there's new stuff coming out uh, so it's it's a real learning curve curve and you need to learn every single year with some new things popping up uh, as you might see where we're going already when I zoom out a little this uh, starts to look uh, quite cool already. Now let me change the color for a second. Let's make it look that color. This, this looks quite good already. It's starting to uh, get a bit of shape. Um, so next thing I want to do uh, is basically I want all these parts selected and I'm going to extrude those. Um, I'm going to do it in two steps because I'm gonna have to uh, see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna extrude this to like a certain value. Let's say I'm just gonna extrude about one to make it easy. And then I'm gonna go back to the front view. So I press T to go to the top view and I'm gonna go back to the front view. And uh, basically I want to select everything again. Not handy. I put this in red. So let me put the check set. So now I have all of that selected. Okay. So I have the front one selected again, and now I'm gonna deselect these because, as you can see in this thing, well, it's it's a bit hard to see, but you have those horizontal vent lines, go uh, grill lines, sticking out a bit more than this um, thing holding it all in place. So I'm gonna. Um, Extrude those horizontal lines a bit more, and let's see. Yeah, those are gonna be a one also. I'm just gonna extrude those by one. All right. All right. So um, this looks quite decent already, I think. Um, I'm gonna do a small step, which is uh, selecting. Oh, <laughs> I I just get used to working on this, so so it's easy for me to think about what to do. But um, uh, if I'm going too fast, just yell and just tell me. Um, oh, hello, Leo, and you're saying UTC one. Well, I checked it up on the internet, and it's telling it's telling me Amsterdam is UTC plus two. All oh, right, this has to do with the summertime, right? Okay, so hmm. next time I will put it to you to see one. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, um, back to the model here. Uh, I'm gonna select this edge here. This is on the front. Well, since we extrude it, we don't wanna uh, get all those uh, edges selected. So I can't really drag and drop uh, from the front position anymore because it's gonna be uh, selecting a lot more things that I don't want to add it and um, this might look weird because I'm selecting the middle one right now but we just uh, extruded the horizontal ones and let me quickly show you that because if I'm going to perspective pressing Z to get uh, focused this is what it looks like right now
All right. So this is the model right now as it looks. All right. So what I'm doing, I'm selecting this one, and I'm control. Um, I'm shift clicking on this. And what's doing now? It's selecting all of these uh, edges along the line. So I'm gonna go and click uh, this little frame next to connect, and then I'm gonna go to the segments and put it on two. And I'm gonna press this. Okay. So basically, what I just did, I added a lot of edges, and uh, when I'm moving them around right now, I can show you this is happening all right so uh, basically this is what I want to happen but not for all of them I just want this one this this bar holding it all together uh, to get a bit more rounded off so I'm gonna go and click all these edges together that are sitting right there and then I'm gonna uh, drag them out a bit so this looks a bit more rounded off gonna give a bit more uh, smooth uh, thing to look at and it's not gonna look ridiculous um, let's see back to front view actually I'm not sure if this should curve up or not I thought it looked cool but I'm not too sure anymore but yeah maybe we can fix that later on um, let's see next thing um, I'm actually gonna do the, the same thing with um, the horizontal lines, I'm gonna select all of these, and I'm gonna. Well, this was done by selecting one, then shift clicking on the next one, and it's gonna basically ring around everything and select all the edges along this line here, all the way to the middle. So I'm gonna do this for the next one too, like control click on the next edge, shift click on the next one, and let's go and select these. Same for this one, same for that one. Same that one. I'm gonna go to this little frame next to connect again. I'm gonna get two. I could also get three or four um, to get it even more smoothed out, but we have a little bit of mesh smoothing later on, and that's gonna sort all the problems. You do not want to use turbo smooth. I repeat, you do not want to use turbo smooth because that's gonna basically smooth the whole thing and it's gonna look weird because and it's gonna add a lot of polygons and verts and stuff that you don't really need and that's going to bring up a lot of rendering time and causing frame drops. <sighs> the music is too loud. I hope I haven't been talking for shit then. I'm just going to close this. Alright, so it's going to be a bit boring maybe without the music. But this uh, makes it easier for you guys to hear me. Um... As for those who just joined in, uh, basically I'm uh, deciding on modeling uh, another grill, and this is going to be the grill, and I'm going to make it the way that uh, you can actually put this grill, uh, like you see here, because well, if you know the the, the Ferrari Tesserossa, uh, you know the tail lights are actually behind the grill, so I'm going to try and make this grill work like the Tesserossa one, so you can put the tail lights behind the grill. Uh, if the current tail lights in the game do not allow me to um, uh, do not allow me to do it with um, uh, with the grill in front, then I'm gonna model a couple of tail lights that actually do uh, fit with this uh, grill and Ferrari Testarossa model. Um, let's see. Uh, we got Duke Axon asking for a new multiplayer. Uh, mostly the multiplayers are during the weekends, so we're gonna try and uh, well do it during the weekends again. Um, I currently do not have the the, the table with me, uh, so if um, if Aaron could check that out, please, then uh, he can tell you. Uh, we have it uh, somewhere in there though. Um, let's see. We go, we're gonna go back to this. Um, so basically, what I'm gonna do is uh, get these segments to two. By I first click this connect button frame thing here, make it segments to two, and then press the check. 
<laughs> and now it's in there. So to uh, give you a feeling of what I'm doing right now, let's see. Well, the pivot point is going to be right here because I have a lot of these selected. Um, but what I just did is I put this all right there. And whoops. I'm going to go and drag these out a little so now they get smoothed out a bit. And well, that looks actually quite fancy pansy, if you ask me. Um, the back of those grill the grill does actually look a bit flat so what I'm gonna do next is press the R button for the scaling and then I'm gonna go and scale up nope I'm not gonna do that <laughs> um, right how am I gonna do this let me quickly think it there should be I think this could be fixed with a constraint I don't know which one does the trick though Hmm. Well, there's a different way to solve this. I'm just going to quickly uh, go back. And now I'm going to go back to this. I'm, this is a bit of a hacky way. <laughs> I believe there must be a much easier way, but I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to add 4, and what I'm going to do next is um, basically I'm going to go and uh, select every second one and third one and do this for all of them. So I actually spaced out everything evenly with the with the connect um, tool. And I'm going to select these. And I'm going to click remove. So this leaves me with uh, this fancy model. Let's see. I still have these unwanted uh, vertices in the middle. So let's see what happens if I click delete. No, okay, this is not working. Um, so I'm gonna have to remove those. And what's next is actually um, I'm gonna have to remove these verbs. By all means, I'm not a professional model where I just have taught myself a lot of stuff uh, during the years, so please, if I'm doing anything wrong and you know what you're doing then tell me because <laughs> there's still so much to learn okay so you might tell of course uh, some modeling comes with quite some uh, time uh, consuming things as you uh, want to make everything look quite smooth and, and good looking and detailed it just takes a lot of time there's some professional modelers that make uh, some really cool stuff but they have to literally invest like at least one and a half months of work to get everything ready for rendering and then when they render it, they, they find some problems and then they have to work for two more weeks to get everything sorted out and then still they have to sometimes uh, smooth their renders out with some photoshopping and stuff. Of course Photoshop is not going to help <laughs> with, the, with this game. It's going to have to look uh, clean in game so I'm going to try and uh, deliver a clean model that's uh, going to be usable probably for the game, I hope. <laughs> and see so I'm gonna select those let's see we have pickle plays hello welcome might get boring a bit but um, I'm trying to uh, speed up uh, 
the work here to get it all done. Uh, basically, I don't want all these verts there because, well, they're just sitting there doing nothing and uh, it's going to save some rendering because right now we already have quite some polys. So I'm going to remove those. And uh, this leaves us with uh, quite a nice uh, setup here. So it's still looking all decent. It still has that um, curved edge. Well, it doesn't have that curved edge yet, so I'm going to have to um, select one polygon and then shift clicking on the next one and then control and then shift clicking, control, shift, control, shift, control, shift. So now I have everything selected around. Um, so I'm going to press T and then I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to drag a box to here. Uh, if I'm going to do it like that, just all the way, then it's going to deselect everything. But I know these polygons are in the front, so I'm going to go to like just uh, halfway this uh, first thing here. And then I'm going to release. And this leaves me still selected with all the front polygons that I want to move and deselect everything else. So uh, let's see. I'm now going to. Oh, let's see. I'm going to. Zoom in quite right so you guys can see it much better. And I'm now going to move these out. And ta ta. Now, this is going to curve right, and then it's going to pretty much straighten this bit because it's much bigger. Uh, just like it actually, well, it looks like that on here that the middle section on the horizontal line is actually flat. Um, let's see. We got an active chat going on. Um, yeah, Blender is a good thing, but uh, Blender also has a lot of restrictions. And uh, I tried using Blender, um, but it gives me a lot of well setbacks, uh, especially if you're like used to 3ds Max. Um, I basically use 3ds Max uh, since I was young, and I also learned some uh, in school during my uh, game designer. Uh, uh, specialization um, so yes uh, I, I really like this program so I'm, I'm gonna stick to using this even though blender is free I uh, still running uh, the student version so that should be all all right but I cannot make a profit out of this of course um, so I cannot make anything that that's gonna give me money um, all right so I'm gonna be happy with that. Uh, as you might see, this bit on the left side. Um, well, I'm just gonna grab the picture. Of this one on the left side here is actually curving a bit to the back. So I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna go into this. I'm gonna go into top view, and this is still straight. So I'm gonna select the verts, and instead of selecting everything like that and moving it back like uh, like that as you might suspect I'm not gonna do it like that um, I'm actually only gonna select the front ones I'm gonna leave this intact so it actually smooths down to like a more uh, narrow spot um, I'm gonna show you what I mean because it's it's hard to explain all this 3d modeling with uh, with just words see so this is the next one and then the next one hmm I made a sm little mistake I think uh, let's quickly see okay so I'm gonna move that one like that it looked a bit weird to me so I'm just gonna check on that Hmm. Let me quickly get into perspective mode because I want to see what's going on. Hmm. Now they're curving up, and that is looking a bit weird. select that one. Let's 
let's see, quickly put that back. I'm going to deselect this one too. Uh, so I'm going to only do this last bit here. Deselect. Ah, oh shit. <laughs> I want to deselect all of these. And then move them like that. And then move them like that a bit. Oh, I don't want to make this, this curve too too hard, so I'm just going to go slightly on that. Mm, I still think uh, this doesn't look too good. Let's see. I think this, uh, the difference between um, uh, this one and the next one is a bit too big. So I'm going to see if I can fix that by uh, getting all of these a bit more in. I'm going to deselect those, and then I'm going to get those more into. And let's see, let's pick some more verts here. I'm holding control to click these, by the way, and uh, not unselect any other ones, so let's move that out a bit. That and then move this one in a bit more too. Uh, I also want to clearly state that we are no way related to the developers of the game. Uh, of course, we talk about what we can show and what we can do, and we try to keep the communication live a bit. Um, but the thing you're seeing here right now is definitely not a developer stream. This is something done by fans and fans only. And if it's good, it's going to be in the game. Uh, if it's not good enough for the developers, then it's going to be in the game as a mod. So, um, yeah, uh, you're not dealing with devs here. It's just to make that clear. Let's see. Uh, okay, so I'm quite happy with that, actually. Um, Let's see. So you might want to know how it looks in the end. So if you if you're looking for the total view on this thing, so I'm going to go to this. Um, let's see. I'm going to go to this this modifier uh, modify tab. I'm going to drop down this menu, and I'm going to go to symmetry. Press enter, and it's got a symmetry. And I'm going to click the z-axis flip. Let's see. Open up this box mirror. Uh, probably not flip. Wait, the y, the x axis, flip. All right, and then I'm gonna put that one down to zero. And if I'm gonna see now, this is what it kind of looks like right now. Because I didn't have it exactly in the center of the picture, um, it's gonna go uh, a bit funky because it's not gonna go all the way to the end. Um, but yeah, basically that's. Uh, that's what's going on with this model here. Um, let's see. So let me un unsee that. Uh, let me quickly check on how this looks and compare it to the image. I think this looks pretty pretty far done already. <laughs> it was a bit easier than I thought. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, so to give you an idea of uh, what I meant with having all these additional edges, uh, like down here, like all these 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 extra segments down the down the middle, um, I'm just going to select a couple and see if this works. So I'm going to select this and give it the bend modifier, and if I'm going to make that angle, I'm going to have to select the. See, this is what it does basically. If um, oh, let's see, I'm gonna re delete this bent one. I'm gonna show you with a, a different model. Uh, let me select a box. I'm gonna make this like that. And let's say I'm gonna give it uh, like one segment. And let's see if I'm gonna get some bend on there. And I'm gonna press like on the X. This is basically what it does now. Or the y-axis. Let's see. Now this is not right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is what it does. And um, if I go back to the box, and I'm going to give it extra segments, you can see what's happening, right? It's going to be 
a more smoother bend so basically this is how the game works too if it doesn't have all those those extra things and I actually put uh, this middle section out of one big piece then you're basically gonna get something like that or like that and it's gonna cut straight through the body because it's gonna connect this point to that point straight away so the left side to the right side and if I'm, uh, if I'm having a lot of more segments it's just gonna curve around the edge more so that's basically what it does um, right let's see uh, we're gonna need a UV mesh let's see um, this one's actually gonna be easy for this grill uh, you do not need any additional segments here so you can make this uh, one big uh, one big UV mesh I'll make him pink always because well it's easier to recognize um, I'm gonna go to edible poly depending on what grill you have of course you're gonna need extra verts uh, on the on the on the plane to make the UV mesh because um, in the end you uh, you're probably going to make some uh, uh, more rounded grills like uh, a, 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 well let me quickly get an example here uh, a Bentley Continental grill if I'm gonna take a look at that um, you're gonna need to uh, smooth around those edges those corners um, much more so you're gonna need extra efforts uh, then you want to add a bit more of those uh, segments but right now this is quite rectangulish so I'm gonna go on that let's see I'm gonna alt X on that one too uh, let's see like that I might even want to add additional f uh, things right there so hold on I'm, I might actually do that uh, let me quickly select both of those put those to zero and then I'm gonna up this one to there. Maybe even have that uh, curve around better. But uh, let me first fix this. I'm gonna put that up a bit. I don't want this to be. I don't want the UV mesh to actually be higher than the than the grill itself. So I'm gonna put it like that. And as you might see now, the it's actually a bit well straight line down there so I don't really like that so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select actually um, let me hide this one for a second uh, let's see hide selection um, I'm gonna select the edge on the right side and I'm gonna select the edge on the left side I'm gonna go to the frame next to connect again and I'm gonna give it two extra uh, edges and with those edges come extra verts. As you can see, it added some extra verts on the right side, and it's adding some extra verts on the left side too. And now this gives me the option to actually uh, smooth around that corner a bit more, so it suits uh, the model much better. Right-click, uh, unhide all, and it's going to be back. Uh, so this might be our. Uh, UV mesh, but um, I think it might it might be causing some issues because it's so high. So I'm gonna drop that down a little bit to get that sorted out a bit. I think this might work. Uh, the next step is actually seeing where the UV mesh is, um, because the UV mesh is the place. Uh, the UV mesh does a couple of things. Let me sort that out first. Um, the UV mesh is the place where the grill actually uh, goes into the body. If I'm going to put the UV mesh right here at the front, that means it's going to put uh, the UV mesh is going to be the place where it actually connects to the body and stamps into the body. So everything behind the UV mesh is going to go inside of the body. If I'm going to put this UV mesh to the back. Um, now this grill part is going to come forward so the UV mesh is the place where it hits the body and uh, all of these vents are going to come forward out of the body so this might give a, a nice little attribute so what I'm looking at is actually I'm going to place um, the UV mesh around the middle so this comes out of the body a bit and 
um, I suspect that uh, this might be enough for uh, the taillights to uh, actually um, uh, be visible behind the grill. So you have the grill going over the taillights. Um, let's see. So um, I'm thinking. Hmm. As I was saying with bending the model around, uh, I'm not too sure if it actually bends around because these vertical uh, lines don't have a UV mesh. So I'm going to add some uh, extra lines, lines down there for uh, to make sure. So I'm going to add five extra lines. Um, maybe I'm going to add a couple more because I want to just make sure. All right, so let's put in six. Um, yeah, and uh, in the beginning of the stream, I already explained that I cannot, uh, unfortunately, uh, export this because I'm having problems with my 32-bit uh, uh, 3ds Max. So I cannot export it at this time. But I'm going to take you through the process of modeling, and I'm going to take you through the process of uh, getting this Lua file done. Um, I had a lot of help by Pearlix. Uh, with the Lua files, um, but this is going to be the first time I'm going to do the Lua files. So let me give you an example. This one is actually copied from a camshaft software themselves. It's uh, for grill number 10. I do not know which one it is, but I just wanted to take a look. And um, what it does is giving you a year that it becomes able to be built uh, using uh, thump onedds which is going to be the first thump you click on and then you're going to go into the second menu that's going to, going to show you uh, the different thump for um, the other grill. Uh, they basically put in uh, the name of the mesh and the name of the UV mesh. So if I'm going to name my grill Wizzy Tassarasa, it's going to go in the mesh name and then I'm going to go this one Wizzy Tassarasa underscore UV mesh. Uh, let's see, it's going to have a cooling multiplier to, uh, well, do the cooling calculations. Uh, basically the UV mesh also uh, is used for cooling calculations, I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> I wanted to explain you and then I forgot it, stupid. Anyway, uh, the UV mesh is also used for the cooling calculations. And uh, if I'm going to make a very small one, then it's going to have a very small area that's going to count as a cooling area. and therefore uh, not going to go very well, right? Uh, it's going to give you very little cooling. Um, but the, the, the UV mesh also needs to be big enough so uh, it actually stamps into the body pretty well, so you can never make a too small UV mesh to make it not stamp well. Uh, let's see. Um, so we have this Lua file here. I've been actually setting this up here. Uh, this this is the car parts. I already put this in here, like uh, car parts grills. Wizzy Tessarossa parts that Lua. Let's see. Um, and then made by me, of course. Um, then I'm gonna have this enabled in 1984, of course, because this is when the Tessarossa was launched. So I'm gonna go for that year. I'm gonna give it the thump, and then I'm gonna go for the parts. It's gonna go for Wizzy Tessarossa's mesh name, then Wizzy Tessarossa UV mesh, and it's gonna go for that thump. Well, I'm gonna have to change those thump names according to when I make the thump with the thump maker. Uh, that's the reason why they have thump one here and then thump right there so I'm gonna have to fix that as soon as it's uh, it's done uh, I can add a cooling multiplier so I can make this 0.33 but I think 7.5 will be quite pretty decent because um, it's gonna cool the engine in the rear quite a lot and it's gonna be a big engine so it's gonna need a lot of cooling and I want this grill to cool very much um, let's see um, though I do not know in what way this this whole thing works, uh, as I'm saying also with the with the UV mesh, if there's anything wrong, I get probably corrected by the devs, and I will rectify that later on. Uh, also for the years enable, I think this works uh, right now. If not, then probably later on in the game because it well, it's probably still going to serve a purpose for sitting right there. 
Um, as for the materials, you have a couple of different ones, uh, like ECS body. This will give you uh, the body color to uh, the material you applied. Um, I actually didn't open one of the, the. Let me quickly let me quickly save this. Hold on. Uh, so I'm gonna go right there. Let's see scenes. Ah, Trius Max scenes. Wait, I should be in Max Design. Sorry, it's an old map, an old directory that I actually uh, ported over. Uh, let's see automation hub. And ooh, there's a lot of things in there. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm also busy doing some badges, exhaust, and stuff. So don't get excited. I'm uh, quite busy, but I'll try to fix them uh, pretty soon. Uh, so we're talking about the uh, Wizzy Testa Rosa. Okay, this is going to be the parts that. Oh no, not the parts that Lua. What am I doing? Uh, this should be the Wizzy Testa Rosa file. Okay, um, let's see, do I have a model that has all of that stuff in there? Mm, there must be. Let me quickly check. So documents, 3ds Max designs, scenes, and um, this is going to be an automation, probably. I don't know. Probably I have one of uh, Pleb's uh, uh, designs um, going around. Um, let's see. I can. Well, I can't show you right now. But uh, when you have one of the test uh, models that uh, the. the, the, the uh, one of the max files that Daffy delivered is going to have a couple of materials in here and one of those materials is going to be one of the materials um, with all the the things in there like the like the uh, grill mesh and uh, the rubber collar and the plastic collar and the chrome variant and stuff like that so you can give it uh, some stuff like uh, give it the correct materials to make show make him show up correctly so you're gonna have the body material which is just gonna be number one I'm gonna show you this later on so I'm just this is gonna be like a number one in that material selector and then there's gonna be a couple of different stuff like standard mat is gonna go for anything that's like the grill mesh uh, then you also have like you could change this to ECS and then uh, let's say chrome or uh, let's say carbon fiber you can do it like that. Um, so basically, uh, yes, that's that's what you could do. Uh, hold on a sec, uh, a moment, uh, because I forgot something very, very, very important for you to do. Um, yes, Plap, I can do that, but uh, let's uh, let's fix that another time when uh, when I'm actually gonna do uh, the export and uh, m maybe make a new grill and uh, have everything working with the 32 version, uh, 32 bit version. Let's quickly see. So I forgot a very important thing. Uh, when you're actually modeling and you're going to make these curved edges, what you want to do is uh, you want to select all of these. Oh, OK. Wait, sometimes it does this because it thinks it should select the other one while it's not supposed to. Um, I'm gonna do this differently. Hold on. I'm gonna select all of these, and then I'm just gonna Alt and drag around there, and drag around there, like that. I'm just gonna delete everything I don't need. Then I'm gonna go to the top view, and basically I'm just gonna deselect all of that, and then I'm gonna deselect all of that. Nope, didn't have that one. And then I'm gonna deselect all of that. Let me quickly make sure to deselect all of this. So I'm now going to have everything um, selected that I need. Alright, then to make sure to, that this is all good, I'm going to quickly go down the list here. And I'm going to apply a smoothing group to all of these. And as you can see now, they're smoothed. Let's see. 
it's actually quite hard to rotate well like that. So let me see. So these are a bit smoothed out now. This line, these lines are a bit rough still. Um, I also want to uh, grab all of those probably. So let me quickly reselect everything and go to front view. Select those, select deselect those, deselect those, deselect those, deselect those, like that. Um, and then go to the left view. And then let's see. I'm going to deselect these. And I'm going to, no, it's not going to work like that. I'm going to deselect these. I can't really do them all in one go because if I do that I'm going to probably deselect a lot that's behind it. Let's see. Yeah, I'm already doing that. Hmm. It's because it curves up. Hold on. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Let me quickly try it like that then. Let's do the same thing again. Stupid. Alright. Mm. I can probably maybe just do it like that. Hold on. Like that. Like that. You're not really going to see the bottom side of this, this grill anyway, so I'm just going to do the, the top bit here for now. And if you want to do it real, real good, then you're also going to select the bottom side. But if it's not visible, then why should you, right? I don't want to want to get everybody to easily and easy does it fix it hacks, but uh, for now it's uh, it's a workaround to uh, speed up this process a bit because it's a bit boring to watch. And let's see. Of course, we do not want to be boring at automation hub. And also, if you haven't uh, liked us yet on. Uh, Facebook, go to facebook.com slash automation hub and like our page. We uh, got quite a number of likes uh, over the past uh, week, so uh, I want to say thank you to everybody for that. Uh, we really appreciate uh, your support for uh, everything we do, and um, yeah, basically, we are really happy with that. Um, also, if you haven't followed us on Twitch yet, do so too. Uh, over on Twitch, we have 47. Uh, followers already if that goes up to 50 uh, we will actually be uh, getting a prize out to any uh, of those first 50 followers so uh, make sure you follow us and if we get up to 50 then well we're gonna be real happy and we're gonna make you happy too if you're the lucky one um, and no it's not gonna be a game serial code because most of you already played the game and why would you need a second one so uh, don't worry about that. We're going to have a very cool uh, different prize for you. Um, with that said, uh, I actually selected everything at the model here. Uh, and I'm going to give those the smoothing group number two. Because I do not want them to uh, actually get in touch with the other ones I selected. And I gave smoothing group number one. So I want to give those their own group. So I'm going to make this two. And now this all looks a bit smoothed out too. And the same goes for uh, actually this this front thing. So let me quickly select around this, and now go back to the top view. And then I'm going to deselect. Uh, basically, um, do I want to deselect those? Mm, actually, I think. I don't. I want to give those number three. So I'm going back to front view perspective. Let's see if I'm going to deselect those. This is what it looks now. It look, looks like now, and it's quite smooth. What happens if I give those number one two? Can you see the change? If I apply number one. So let's say I'm going to deselect that. This is what it looks now. I'm going to apply number one, and that's what it looks now. Looks like now. It's going to be like silky smooth right there. 
Um, actually, that does look good. So I'm thinking maybe I should do this everywhere. <laughs> so let me quickly. Um, also, I do not want this one in the back to interfere with this one. So I'm only gonna go for uh, these additional ones uh, that are running that smoothing roof. Uh, so let's see, I'm gonna have to individually select all of these. And then go back to the front again, let's see. And like that. We are actually very happy with uh, the capability of the game being modded like this and uh, we definitely are happy with the mods, uh, the developers uh, supporting uh, people into modding the game because it's going to make it easier for them to get content in the game and it's also going to be fun for people outside of the game to uh, tweak around with the game a bit. Uh, now I selected everything, I'm going to apply smoothing group 1 to those and now this looks smoothed out uh, much much better alright this is gonna be a decent model like that uh, let me quickly save that come back to the thing um, so yes the, um, the materials which I am going to apply uh, they would probably only need one material and that's because of um, uh, because of only those uh, um, sorry, I keep forgetting the name. Um, only this this grill area needs one material, so we either I'm just gonna quickly do it like this. Uh, let's get a black one on there, or like a, a, a rubberish. It's gonna be a bit like that. Uh, maybe some plastic glossiness on there. Something like that. Uh, or we're gonna have something that's a bit more like uh, carbon fiber, of course. And yes, carbon fiber looks very fancy. So it can be more something like that. And to give you an idea of uh, what it could be, let me quickly deselect that from perspective. That's what it's gonna look like, hopefully. So I hope this is going to work pretty well. Um, yeah, for now, this is uh, this is the model. So with the Lua file, uh, it's going to be... Um, it, this is going to be the body color, but of course I want this to be either plastic or uh, for the next one, I want this carbon fiber. So let's say we make this Lua file already. I'm going to fill in plastic right here. And then I'm going to have to... Uh, copy all of this and then add another line and it's gonna go for the same thing and this is well let's say this is gonna be thump one and then this is gonna be thump zero zero one two and then this is gonna be uh, let's see carbon fiber so that should be suited um, and this is the weight per individual, so I might even put that down to like, let's say, I don't know how light is carbon fiber compared to plastic. I don't know. Uh, does anyone have any idea? Uh, I never actually felt carbon fiber before, so I do not know if it's any weight difference compared to plastic. I know it, it, it's really power uh, strong, m stronger than plastic itself. Uh, let's just keep it at two for now. Um, this is funny. Actually, all the Lua files have this this small thing in there that they all say "close headlight." Well, it should. Well, this is just a comment, but they forgot to take it out because it's in the original one too. Um, so I'm gonna grill. All right. Uh, Yeah, you do not, uh, Pleb says, you do not need to edit this part because you can just leave it like that and it's, but it's fun to play around with because, yeah, 
you can add some additional cooling for several grills and this costing and stuff you do not really need to do that but if there's a possibility that this really affects the cost uh, per uh, uh, per fixture all right um, yeah so uh, we have this model here we smoothed everything we have the UV mesh uh, set let's see um, unhide all uh, so what you want to do let me quickly remove this symmetry one um, as soon as you're actually going to uh, export stuff uh, you want to um, select this thing then go to this menu and then click export and then export selected because uh, if you're going to export the whole thing it's going to do uh, the UV mesh and the background picture uh, also and you do not want that so I'm going to be able to export that and then uh, you can get that KJC uh, uh, thing working and then you're going to name name it exactly like in the Lua file so it's going to be Tesla Rasa, Wizzy Tesla Rasa, mind the capitals by the way um, and then the other one is going to be Wizzy Tesla Rasa underscore UV mesh um, yeah so that's that's what it's going to be but uh, select the UV mesh then go to export select and then save as UV mesh um, I think this is um, um, mm -mm. this is it I think I didn't forget anything at this point so uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed my 3D uh, modeling tutorial stream uh, if there's any questions feel free to uh, ask me in the chat uh, I will still be around in the chat for uh, for like a couple of minutes um, if you really want to learn from this tutorial uh, this is going to be uploaded on YouTube and we will post the link on our Facebook page make sure you check out our uh, Facebook page uh, as I said a couple of minutes uh, ago already on facebook.com slash automation hub like us and stay up to date with all the latest news um, as for our f uh, Twitch, make sure you uh, follow us on Twitch and get notified as soon as we start streaming again. Uh, as for the website, uh, I want to get all these people that are here. Uh, well, we have not been working a lot on the website the couple of uh, days because, uh, well, my programmer took a day off, a couple of days off because his girlfriend is over in London and yes uh, we do need our free time and I hope you uh, appreciate that well of course everybody wants this uh, website to be done just like us um, but expect it still to be up there like in one and a half week uh, we're gonna work our asses off to um, to uh, make it well actually work um, Yes, uh, thanks a lot for watching again, and uh, I hope uh, we can all see you next time, and if you have any questions, I'll be in the chat. So have fun, bye-bye.